How's it going everybody? This is Mark with At Tech, and in this video we're going to compare a $3,000 3D printer to a $150 3D printer. How much of a difference are they going to make? Are you going to notice a difference in your print and should you fork out more money for a better or more expensive printer? Let's check it out. So right here we've got two identical objects. They're the same object. One was printed on the $150 around there, depending on which model you get. Mono Price Select Mini 3D Printer. This is the version one. They do have a version two that came out, but we're on the version one, which is even cheaper, about $120 used. And then we are also using the Zortrax M300. This is a $3,000 3D printer that is huge and can print some giant objects. Now, if you don't really know a lot about 3D printers, you may just think bigger price means better, and hey, this Zortrax one is much bigger, so it can do bigger prints. Well, it's true that it can do bigger prints, and that is one of the benefits of getting a bigger 3D printer like that. But what about quality? What if you do not care about size and you only care about quality? How are they going to perform? Before I reveal the results of which 3D printer printed which object, let's talk a little bit about how each one of them works. The Monoprice 3D printer uses G-code, and it can uh, be made in any software. You can take your STL file, and I usually use Cura, which is one of the best slicers out there and what everybody uses pretty much. I use Cura and I slice my thing to fit the plate of the Monoprice printer. Then I export that as a G-code, popped in the SD card into the printer and clicked print, other than making sure that it wasn't oozing filament before it started printing and everything started looking smooth, there was really not much to it. When you want to load and unload filament, you do have to do that manually. You cannot press a button and unload it, which is one of the benefits of the Zortrax is that a lot of the stuff is automated, less manual, and you can actually just press a button and it'll do a lot of this stuff for you. Now the Zortrax on the other hand still does take an STL file just like any other 3D printer, but you have to use the proprietary Z Suite software, which outputs a Z code rather than a G code. If you own a Zortrax printer, you I'm um, not going to have an issue, but if you don't, you will need a serial number in order to download um, the software. So you, like, you have to be an owner in order to uh, use their software. It is very feature rich. It is somewhat user friendly compared to Cura. Um, and you can pretty much just throw something in there and click export and you're good to go. But you can get pretty specific if you want, um, which is nice because you can pick whatever you want. You don't really have to know exactly what you want to do. Um, it kind of does a lot of that stuff for you. Now, Cura, when you're exporting, you just click the export button and it just saves it to your desktop. The Z Suite, on the other hand, took at least five minutes to export this tiny little holder that I made because it has to just do a bunch of slicing and pre-configuring for the specific printer. It takes a ton of time, and if you have a giant print, expect to wait a long time. So, the Zortrax is much more expensive and the software has more features and it takes a long time to process. That means it's probably gonna be really good, right? We're almost there. Okay, so to unload the filament, you just press, press a button, it'll unload that, you feel to feed in your new one, and it'll spit out the old filament and it will load the new one all in one fell swoop. It's really nice and simple. It even has a door, so I guess when it's really getting in there, your plastic doesn't fly away. I don't know, I don't know why you need a door. Uh, but it has some cool LED lights, it is very big build plate, and it can go up really wide and really tall, um, which is a good benefit to that printer. Okay. Here's another thing I thought was going to be really different. A big printer, which is really expensive and good, is it going to print faster? Not really. It took about 56 minutes to print this little toothbrush holder um, on the Zortrax printer, and it took about an hour and 12 minutes on the mono price. Now, when I was printing it, I did 100% speed. I didn't do anything to slow one down or the other to make a print better. Um, they are just kind of the basic settings thrown in there and full speed ahead, that's what it did. Okay, so let's take a look at the um, different objects before I finally reveal which one is which. So the one in gray looks very smooth. The bottom is a little bit bumpy um, from the bed that it was printing on, and it um, is pretty nice. You can definitely tell the lines, um, but it's pretty smooth. The lines are even, the line height is about the same, and there's really not much special about it, it just looks good. 
The white one on the other hand, the bottom of it is extremely messy. You can tell it's really stringy, and this is because of the build plate adhesion. And the build plate adhesion um, did not, I guess, really form that well, so it actually kind of ended up sticking to the bottom when it's supposed to peel off. And then we can also see that the line height is a little bit thicker. You can definitely tell the each pass much more than the gray one. And you can also see some little gaps in there too. Maybe there's something on the head or something, but you can definitely see gaps. The lines are much thicker, so you have a taller line height. It's not as fine quality as the one in gray. And overall, I don't think it looks that good. It looks worse than the one in gray. Okay, here are the results. Which one do you think is which? Let me know in the comment section. I really wanna know if you think the Zortrax is gonna give a better print or the Monoprice is gonna give a better print. You ready? Okay, so the one in gray, which is arguably the better print, is the Monoprice printer. I know, a $150 printer was able to do this. And then the Zortrax, of course, did the white one, and I was very disappointed. Now, I have a couple of reasons for why I think the Zortrax is a little bit worse. Um, one, it's been used a lot, so there's probably a lot of gunk on the head, um, which could cause a couple of issues, and the bed is also maybe not the best. But using the Z-Suite automatically makes your build plate adhesion, which is optional. You can enable that or disable that inside of Cura. And adhesion and support structure was not necessary because this is pretty much a cube, which adheres pretty well to the build plate. Um, but anyway, it automatically generated that, and you just kind of peel it off. You can see here um, what it was doing. It looked very, very messy and quite awful. Um, luckily, that did peel off, except on the bottom, it did not. I also picked normal quality um, during my print because it would take a much longer time, and I mainly matched the print time with the print time on the mono price. So um, quality... I could have picked a better resolution, which probably could have helped with those line heights a little bit, but matching the um, settings that I used in Cura, which I also just did normal print, um, no, not poor quality, but not amazing. Um, I think they were pretty similar in time and quality and fill density, uh, but it was very interesting to see the difference between the two. I was quite surprised. So should you go out and get a $150 3D printer? Well, it's not gonna be the best, of course. There are better ones. And if you take the time, you can make a cheap one good. And if you got an expensive one that's bad and you take the time, you can make that one even better. If the Zortrax was maybe more properly calibrated, um, it could have probably done better. Or if I would have wanted to do a better high quality print or done longer, it also would have probably been better. But it also goes to show that you can do a very similar job on both printers with one being so much more money and the other one being very cheap. So whatever 3D printer you get, consider its features. Don't look at the price so much because you're gonna get a very similar image out of both, which is a very nice thing. You can feel confident you're gonna get a similar print out of any of the printers and you don't have to get a super expensive $3,000 one to get um, an amazing result. Before I let you go, I wanna do one more thing. I have access to a $35,000 3D printer, a Dimension 3D printer, that if you want me to compare to the Monoprice printer, I'll definitely make a video on that. I wanna see how a $35,000 3D printer compares to a $150 3D printer. Um, and I think that's gonna be really awesome. So let me know if you wanna see that. Um, I'm excited to do that. Uh, but that's all for this video. If you like this, feel free to leave a like and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss our next comparison. We also got a lot of videos on Apple Watch, iPhones, cameras, and other stuff that's just coming out right now. So hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of that. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section below. Leave this video a like, and I will see you in the next one.